Hey guys, today we're making a miniature Doberman, so I hope you'll enjoy. First thing I did, as always, is just to make a sketch of the dog, and the shoulder height of a Doberman in 1 to 12 scale should be 50 to 58 millimeters. I then made an armature, same way as in my doll tutorials, and if you want to see how to make this, you can check out my first doll tutorial or my corpse sprite tutorial. Cover the head and chest with tin foil, then cover the head with clay and start working on the details. As always, if you haven't seen any of my animal tutorials, I do recommend checking out my Saint Bernard tutorial because that one has a lot of basic information. I also have a video about the hair and fur I use for my dolls, which is basically the same hair I use for my animals. And I even have a video about the tools I use for doll sculpting, which again are a lot of the same basic tools. The eyes are made from pommel clay as well, using the same technique as in my eyeball cane tutorial. And they are pre-baked before I use them in any of my sculptures. This dog was requested by one of my patrons and I just want to quickly talk about that because I have gotten some kind of angry comments about that. The thing is that I usually don't take requests for animals and never have because they do take a long time to make. Also other reasons, one of which is the fact that you kind of have to be motivated or inspired to make an animal or a more time-consuming project because otherwise it's not going to be as good. So I've always just preferred picking out the animals that I want to make and the ones I was inspired to work on. But I recently made a Patreon account and I won't go into too much details about that because I'll be putting the link to my account in the info box if you want to check it out. But one of the things I did was allow people on there to request animals because it's something I hadn't taken requests for previously. So nothing changes on my YouTube channel if you choose not to support me or if you're unable to support me. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, one of the reasons why I made the Patreon in the first place was just to be able to improve my content. And one of the major things I want to do is add subtitles to my videos, which gets kind of expensive. Anyway, if you want to read more about it and check out my Patreon account, you can click the link in the info box, but if not, it's completely okay. Once I was happy with the head, I added some clay to the neck and just added a bit of details on there as well. You don't necessarily need to add a whole lot of detail and a whole lot of muscle definition because in 1 to 12 scale you really won't see it once the fur is added. But for tutorial purpose I tried to add as much details as I could without being too much since again you won't really see it when you're done. I then pre-baked and started adding clay to the chest or the body of the dog. And it really is more important to just focus on the basic shape rather than all the fine details, at least in this scale. Something else I did which I forgot to mention is just before pre-baking the head, I added liquid clay to the back of the ears just to strengthen them.
Once I was done with the body, I pre-baked again before I started working on the legs and this is just really to get something to grab onto without squishing what you've already made. If you want to, you can make the legs and paws in one go. I pre-baked the legs before adding the paws, just personal preference, but it's completely up to you. And after baking one last time, this is what it looked like. You then want to paint it using acrylic paint just to get a nice base color for the fur. And the fur I used is black merino fibers. I usually always start by covering the thighs on the hind legs, then start working up the butt and the belly, cover the entire body, add fur to the front legs, then the neck and lastly the head. And the reason why I do it in that order is just because it's the direction of the hair growth. For the entire head as well as the tan part of the legs I used flocking powder and this is the exact same type of merino fiber, I just cut it into really tiny pieces. Lastly we're going to add some shading which is what's going to really make the dog look more realistic. And for this one I decided to try something new, so I first added some black acrylic paint to all black parts of the dog and this is just really going to help lay the fur flat and make it look more sleek. I then continued adding some more shading using soft pastels and I mainly used two shades of brown as well as black but I also added a few highlights using a light grey just because otherwise you really won't be able to see any muscle definition so I chose to enhance this using the pastel.
Finally, I sprayed it with a fixative and this is just the same type of fixative I showed in my art supply video and it's going to protect the pastel. It's also going to make the colors pop so if you add a lot of colorful shading it's going to help with that and it's also going to make the snout and the eyes glossy.